Aloha, it's 365 Hawaii. With Eric and Julie Zimalis, and behind us is Hawaii enshrouded in fog. And that's what this video is going to talk to you guys about. Uh, we're going to talk about what story right now with uh, where is it coming from, uh, how long we think it's going to last, how it affects people here, how it affects us. And, um, what, and for all of you that have never seen it before, what is it? And why yes. is it a big deal? Right. And we're going to give you all of you in this video, you're going to learn all about fog. thing we need to cover is what is fog and fog is a byproduct of when the volcano erupts it's kind of the gas that comes out and it's a sulfur dioxide so2 and it is then that mixes with the moisture and the oxygen and the sunlight and it makes kind of this smog a haze a white haze it, uh, uh, I guess you'd say smog is more kind of like a like a brown haze well this is a white haze and uh, depending on how thick it is can be anywhere from mild to the point where you can barely you know it looks like a fog bank at the end of the day so that is what the actual definition of fog is so now the next question is is it dangerous Right, so uh, if you guys are actually at Kilauea and there is an eruption and the wind turns direction and you get that SO2 right in your face, yes, it can kill you. <laughs> and so um, a lot of the times when you go to Volcanoes National Park, it'll tell you if there is a, um, a wind advisory that also goes into an air quality problem. And yes, if you get trapped in a fresh bloom of this SO2, you're probably going to have health problems. Uh, but what happens here in West Hawaii, it kind of, you know, it goes almost 200, you know, with uh, 90 miles yep. to here. Um, and what some people figure out is the fact that the um, irritants of the SO2 go into your lungs and some people find it very irritating, especially those with lung issues. And so um, it's asthma not, is another way. Yeah, anyone who has asthma, um, older people, people with respiratory problems, um, they're going to probably feel this. And uh, when we were here in 2018, when it was bad, um, the um, air quality levels were almost dangerous. And so Right, and so what they yeah. ended up doing is some people actually got filters in their house, yeah, HEPA right? HEPA filters. HEPA filters, they did that. Uh, and then they would also just keep the air conditioner running, which also kind of filters the air as well to kind of give you a right. and, a, uh, a clean kind of a, kind of a feel to it. Right, and also you're not supposed to exercise vigorously when it's, uh, uh, when the, you know, when the bog is looking like this. Um, but the thing is that, real quick, is the fact that um, you can actually track the um, SO2 and the VOG quality for the air quality on a variety of different apps. Um, so that way you can kind of check and see where it's actually the worst and where it's not so bad. And sometimes what Eric and I like to do is we go to places where it's not so bad. <laughs> Okay, so you might recognize this is the Kona Pier, and this is usually where a lot of people come who are getting off the ships and they're seeing Kona for the first time. And I think the reason why I get a little sad about the air quality looking like this is because I love this town so much, I almost want to apologize for what they're seeing right now. I know that it's just nature and these things happen, but uh, when you come here and you're expecting the blue, blue water and the blue, blue sky, and you get eh, a muted experience, it's kind of like all wham. So, uh, all these people who have yet to uh, see Kona, maybe on your way here, hopefully the skies are going to improve. But uh, know that, uh, yes, this is part of nature. It is what Pele does, and uh, you enjoy it anyway, right? A benefit of the VOG is since it kind of diffuses the sun a little bit, It one, it's not so hot. And uh, number two, it's not so bright on your face, which uh, as us people that have a pronuncy to skin cancer, that's a good one. Okay, so this bog is blown with the wind, and predominantly we have trade winds, which tend to blow it towards the west. So everybody in Hilo, 95% of the time, does just fine. They have perfectly clear, and it's so funny because it's so boggy over here, and everybody's joking about that in Hilo. They're like, oh, we're having a good day. Yeah, yeah, best day ever. Yeah, but we always joke because it always rains over there too. So it kind of, you yeah. get one or the other. And because it's actually starting in the town of Volcano and it blows away from it, actually when you're in Volcano, it's just the bluest day ever. 
but it shows up here in Kona. Right. Why? So then what happens is as these trade winds blow around, they, they, they hit the volcanoes and kind of wrap around and it brings it right into Kona. Right. Okay. And so as it's coming to Kona and it has a, it has an elevation and it's usually about a thousand feet is where it sit, sits at. And so it just kind of rolls in. So it's kind of like a, a big, it's, it's voggy everywhere. It's really bad at right around a thousand feet. Yeah. Rolls over and it goes all the way to Palisades, which is sort of the, the end of Kona there. And then kind of drops off is where it is. But it is, uh, that is where you're at. Now, the question is, what happens when you go up north? How's, how's Waikoloa? Well, get this. So when we were here in 2018, what we found out was in the morning, Kona got most of it. In the afternoon, as those trades continue to bring it up, um, you are going to get it in Waikoloa and you're going to get it up. But it usually stops before Waimea. So uh, it's usually, again, just in actually west of Hawaii that you're going to see more of this. Right. And you go way north, you go all the way up to Javi, and it, it it's not there at all. The, no. the winds, the, the trades are blowing completely differently up there. So that gives you an idea of where it's going to be. So, so we I got to show you this. This is the, look at this. Right before us is the ah, body glove. It's the body glove that's coming in. So, yeah, uh, and those people probably just I had think a they're nice gonna time. Dock right where we're coming. Yep, yep, yep. All right. You might want to say, why are we bringing this to you right now about this whole experience? Well, if you are watching this later, you might not realize that uh, we had an eruption here about three days ago. And the weird thing about this eruption is that it went off. And it was erupting and the SO2 was like billowing out and we saw it coming wrapping around Kona, and then the eruption actually stopped or slowed down. And then it went up again and then it went down again. And so this is the third or fourth day that has been up and down. Today is off. But as you can see, we still have so much fog. So it continually keeps putting SO2 into the air. Maybe not as much as when it first started erupting, but it takes a couple of days to wash out of here once it actually stops. Yeah, so that's what it is. Yep. Uh, and the funny part is that this is the video, we, like I said, part of this cave where we were supposed to go show you guys the eruption and that failed miserably because right at the time we were going to go it well, stopped going up. well it's not failed miserably it's the fact that nature does its own uh, thing. nature does so, what it's uh... gonna do. okay so let's give a little history uh kilauea started erupting like full time in 1983 and it went on to all the way till 2018 where it consistently was just going off all the time and sometimes it was smaller sometimes it was bigger and uh i, I don't know if you guys probably remember there was a period that it would go into the water and i, I think the water was even worth i think it made more fog by spraying into the water than it does here on land but i don't know you can't tell from the day yeah. um but but uh, it, we, we would get the winds. The only time that we got a break here in Kona from this fog is when the winds would change. And I think the waves are what? About once every week, once a week, or once every 10 days, or two weeks, or something like that. Not very often. And so we would call these high definition days. When the fog was gone. When the fog was gone. And so we would quickly try to go do everything, because that was the time to. to go out to your bar, yeah. take your photos, <laughs> make people think that you lived in this bright, sunny world of Hawaii. Yeah. But then on that, we were talking about this too. Uh, what it did though, is it kept a lot of people not coming to this island. Yes, that was that was the other part, is that uh, most tourists knew this island as the island, uh, island with the fog. And why would you- I why, love fog! And why would you come to an island uh, that where the fog was much cheaper? I mean, it was so much that it would it, it, it destroyed your view, right? Yeah. So, and I think it also kind of kept housing prices down for that matter also. Yeah, yeah. people were, were less inclined to get it. And that's what changed so dramatically in 2018, is that once it finally stopped, it, uh, we started getting a lot more people that said, hey, wow, that's a great island and nobody's heard about it before. Yeah, and if you guys are unaware again, under uh, in 2018, um Right, right before this massive eruption that happened, it started in like May, um, there was a massive lava lake uh, building up in uh, the Kilauea um, Halimau Mount Crater. And I remember we were there and it was like thousands of people were watching this big lava lake. And then all of a sudden, like the next day, it drained out like a toilet bowl. Yeah. That and, was and everyone's like this, where the lava go? Then there was a big earthquake and Pu'u'o'o vent collapsed. And then within a few hours, uh, it started going towards what they call the East Rift Zone. So it took three days to get to the East Rift Zone. And then the fissures started opening up um, in different parts around uh, East Hawaii in Puna District. Um, and one of the big ones was Leilani Estates. And so then all of a sudden they had like, I don't know, 15, 16 different fissures opening up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the lava really started flowing. And um, that ended up creating over a mile of new land going out into the ocean. Um, and as a few of you may know, um, it covered up, um, you know, a whole neighborhood, it took out 700 homes. Um, but when that lava flow went into the ocean, that's when it was the <laughs> worst. Then they had this thing called lades, and that's the haze and the lava. And it came over here and really was like the worst. And so then it ended at uh, August 3rd, and it just went one day, just done. 
And then we had these beautiful days after that. In fact, 2020 was probably the best year because we got <laughs> a chance yeah, to not have the tourists yeah. and we had the best air quality. And so this, um, what we're seeing today has happened now since then where we get a little on, a little off eruption as, you know, aspect. And really haven't, we haven't had more than like 21 days of a straight no, eruption. It's, yeah, it's been off and on. And, yeah. and uh, my personal theory is I think that so much of the uh, magma left that uh, it, it can't, it, it, it doesn't build it, a while it, it takes build so long up. to build it back up and even if we have an eruption it's a small eruption because it can't build that much lava back up yeah even though this one's been weird it has blown out and then it actually sucked itself back in blown it out and sucked it back in um so um we will get down to there at some point yeah yeah they, well like i said they claim that it might even happen here before the end of the year so we're going to see if it does we'll go jump on it yeah as yeah. long as it's not like new year's eve or something yeah, silly yeah, like yeah. That. so what we're hoping obviously is that this is actually stopped and that we get some really good strong clear trade winds coming in here and blowing this out and get back to our nice blue Hawaii days. I have a theory. Well, it's not, it's not my theory, but it's it, it, it's a theory out there that says when the fog is there that we get less rain in Kona. Uh, and when we were here back in the old days, it, it seemed like it was a little bit drier than it is now. So so here's the theory. The theory says that the fog creates a layer between the hot air and the cold air. And as the cold air comes up and the hot air comes, I mean, excuse me, the hot air comes up, the cold air comes down. They don't meet as much. So there's less rain being in the during the times that we have fog. I don't know if this is true, but that's something that I heard. Okay, and on the other side of Mr. Weatherman over there, I have actually heard that the fog actually seeds the clouds, which causes more rain to come in. And uh, I'll tell you though, you guys, when uh, you look at the mountains Eric's going to show you, it looks like a rainstorm is already happening up there, but that's not the case. The clouds have come in. Was it because of the VOG or because it's time of year? We're not too sure. So if you guys have an opinion on uh, the VOG affecting the weather, drop them in the comments. It'd be interesting to hear what you had to say. Okay, I was sort of surprised when we started talking about on how many different things there are in VOG that we ended up talking about. I thought there'd just be a couple things like, ah, it's just about VOG, but uh, there's actually a lot. Yeah, so hopefully that we've given you guys a, a good uh, over, you know, general overview of VOG, my nemesis, um, and also the fact that, uh, you know what, there's classic, you know, better days ahead. So um, we are excited for people who actually came to the island during this holiday season to go to the Volcanoes National Park and see this. Um, and uh, hopefully while they're still here, we'll get some clear air too. Yeah, it should it should it should calm it calm down after a little bit of time here. Yeah. When, the, when the winds actually just blow it all away. Yeah, yeah. So um we are also filming this for our other YouTube channel, our three sixty five Hawaii uh, real estate minute. So if you do care about real estate and uh, buying on the island and understanding the nuances about real estate here, go check us out over on that side too and subscribe. Um and then also um you, you know feel free to join our Ohana at three sixty five Hawaii Living dot com and also if you'd like to uh, volunteer here or get involved with the community uh please join our conan Yupes group yeah we've got a lot of, a lot of stuff that they can talk about join think about and do everything like yep, that yep yep and i'm always like coming up with great ideas for you guys that do volunteer work uh, and i'll tell you guys more about that next time we meet so <laughs> uh, right, so, so okay you guys happy uh, new year and uh, merry christmas and uh, we'll see you on the other side aloha